Paul P nominee. Like, I know it, it typically goes to the quarterback. I don't think anybody here is surprised that Bev is our nominee. Um, the way he's played, um, I mean, I've been here for a year and a half or just over a year and a half, and he could be our player of the game in just about every single game he's played. Um, you know, he's been tremendous and outstanding. He flies around the field. He, you know, he obviously loads up a stat sheet with everything. I mean, he's he's capable on every single play of either rushing the quarterback and hitting them, you know, to making a tackle, um, you know, in the open field. Uh, they're usually punishable tackles as well. He can go run down on special teams and make a tackle. I mean, and he can cover. And he, he plays, you know, some free safety for it. He does a little bit of everything on our defense. So, I mean, he's jack of all trades and, and he specializes. He's all over the place. So I just think he's, he's had a tremendous season and his ability, toughness and effort shows on every single play. And he's what we call alouette everything. I mean, that's just what he is. And he's just been tremendous. While we're on this uh, topic, what can you say about Kante after being named for a rookie of the year? Kante is, I mean, he, you're talking about a guy that's taken advantage of an opportunity when he got here and just gotten better and better every single week. That's Kante. I mean, he's, he absorbs the playbook. He's absorbed it since day one, and he's just continued and continued to get better and better and better. Um, I think he has such a bright future. Um, he's exciting to be around, and he's such a tremendous guy. I mean, he, he's fit into our locker room as a rookie so seamlessly. Um, you, you can just tell he loves football, and we love to have him around. I mean, I think he's he's very contagious to our guys the way he plays, and I think he's just tremendous amount of ability in that kid. Going, go going back to uh, the game in BC, naturally you weren't happy after the game. What was the most disappointing thing about that game? Well, I mean, the score is the most disappointing thing. I mean, we don't like to lose at anything we do. I mean, we, that's not the expectation. Uh, people, you know, talked about a short week, this and that. I mean, our expectation was still to go in there and win, regardless. And when I look at the film and when we look at it, we analyze it, four plays. I mean, you're 0 for 3 in the red zone with three opportunities inside the two-yard line and come away with three points. That's very disappointing. I mean, you score three touchdowns there, which is the expectation. And now we're looking at a 27-21 game. Then to open the half, we're fingertips away from another touchdown to Cole. It's a 28-27 game with four plays that aren't hard to imagine those being made. So that's what's disappointing because, um, you know, the toughness that we played with, the physicality that we played with, the energy that we played with and brought, with everything around us not going our way, I loved. I loved everything about all three phases. Now, did we take penalties more than we should have? Yes. I mean, it was uncharacteristic game for that. Even though it was right around our average, they were just still uncharacteristic penalties. Um, you know, and then just to not make the plays that are we're accustomed to making or that you should make, particularly if you want to win games. If, if, you, if you're capable of winning 12 games in a season, you're surely capable of making those types of plays to at least make it interesting at the end. Um, you know, we were fighting like hell just to get it to a two score game at the end because of how much we had screwed up before that. And it would have been nice to just make those three plays inside the two yard line and then give yourself a chance. But uh, that's what's disappointing. I mean, we're disappointed anytime we lose, but there's things to grow off of that. So what did we do this week? Well, our short yardage is getting put in way earlier this week, and we're going to work on it much more this week because we just can't let those things happen. You can't let opportunities like that pass you by. And so our guys under need, not that they don't, but we got to reconfirm that. And as coaches, that's what we took on ourselves. We said we didn't prepare our guys enough in short yardage situations to be successful. And so we'll take it on ourselves. But the, now, from day one, we're doing it, and we're going to do it more and more and more. So that doesn't that becomes a strength rather than what was glaringly a weakness in that game. Is it the main thing you're going to look for in the last regular game before the playoffs? Well, I think we want execution across the board. I mean, uh, I think there's a standard of which we play. We want that met, and uh, you know, obviously improving in areas that we were lacking the previous week or weeks. You know, as weeks have been leading up, there's every weakness you want to kind of improve on. That's a glaring one that I'd love to see rectified. Uh, and I know we're going to be going against a very tough team to, to do that against, but that's a great challenge for us. So again, we've we've taken it, took it on the chin. We've, we've analyzed it, we've worked at it, and now it's about us improving. And that what I love about our group is they will work extremely hard to make that a strength, and that will be our mindset going forward. And how do you find the balance right. between telling guys you know to go all in, but also to be careful? There's no team? being careful. Yeah. I'm going to tell you right now, that is not in our DNA. That is not how we operate. Watch us practice, watch us play. You won't see anybody being careful. So we will go and go and go, and we will give her every single second that we're in there. You know, we want to make every second minute an hour count until November 9th, and the part of that is playing with a reckless abandon, playing Alouette football, and that's all-out football. 
Will we see a Mac and a Fletcher? This yep, they're both going to be back in the lineup. So uh, obviously we needed to see other people to give them experience, you know, uh, just in case this game there's any injuries and going forward there's any injury. We want guys that have played and at least some and then and give them some confidence going forward. Is it, does it worry you that these uh, mishaps or lack of execution comes in at this time in the season? Well, I'd rather have them come in right now than in later later than day. I don't think you ever want them to come in. I think it's just an opportunity to learn, though. So it's always frustrating when it happens. Thankfully for us, it, it's happened. We still have games to play. And, you know, again, I love our, our – the way we work around here, I know we'll make it a strength. And so it, maybe it's just the attention to detail. It's doing something a little bit different. And that's what we have to do as coaches and players. And we've put, we've put the work already in motion to be better at that. And all, we, will, we will focus like hell for that to happen. So I think it came at the right time, to be honest with you. I don't think you ever want it to happen. You'd like to learn your lessons and still win a game. But you know, obviously, that wasn't the case for us. So obviously, it's a great lesson to learn. And we still have time to learn it. So going forward, we'll, we'll be better. Congratulations. Hey, thank you very much. For the kid yes, and for the yes. Oh, yeah, thank you. So, how did it go for your return? Uh, it was uh, not as expected, obviously, when you put up three points. But um, I think the biggest thing is we got in the red zone. We got inside the three-yard line three times, and we came away with three points. So, that's the emphasis moving forward is uh, if you want to beat good teams, you got to finish in the red zone. But I thought overall, you know, I thought we moved the ball really well. We uh, put ourselves in some tough situations, uh, at least in the first half when I was in, a couple second and longs, which is unfortunate. And it's always hard uh, to convert on second and long, especially against good defenses. But I think we learned a lot from that tape. And so moving forward, I think it's just going to benefit us tremendously after watching it and, and really analyzing how we can become better. Uh, and, and that's what I'm excited about is us moving forward. What is the main difference between the start of the season where you would get as a unit more than 300 yards a game and you haven't done that in the last six games. Yeah, I think continuity is big, um, at least speaking for myself. Uh, you know, I haven't been a part of it the last three three weeks, and so it's obviously a little bit different. But um, I think you just got to keep grinding. There's more tape on an offense, so you always see it as the season progresses. The defenses end up catching up faster than uh, than you expect, and the reason why is you put so much tape out there that offensively uh, you pretty much put your game plan out there every week. So uh, I've seen it every year. I've been in the league ten years. I've seen it every year offenses get off to an extremely hot start, and then towards the later half of the year the defenses take over. And that's why they say defenses win championships because uh, defenses play a big role in that and offense got to score their points. But uh, this league, it, it, you play so many games and you show so much stuff uh, that defenses end up catching up sooner or later. You were active, you were allowed on the sideline with Davis on the field. How would you describe your connection? Yeah, it's like, uh, you know, I don't know how much he'd like it, but like an older brother, younger brother uh, type of thing. And uh, there's been a lot of good quarterbacks in this league that have taken me under my uh, under their wing. And so I want to do that for him and, and be a, there for him. I understand that it takes two really good quarterbacks to win a great cup on any given team. And uh, we've seen it throughout this year. You know, every starter at some point usually misses some sort of games, whether they get benched, injured, it's, it's the CFL. So you have to have two really good quarterbacks in order to get where you want to get. We have our, uh, we got the luxury of having a first round bye, and uh, I don't want that to be overlooked. That's very hard to do in the CFL. And so uh, as much as everybody wants to think that, you know, the, the walls are caving in around us, we're in a good spot here. And this team believes in ourselves uh, and we don't have to prove anything to anybody but ourselves. And so we're going to go out there in this game. We know Winnipeg's got a lot to play for, but we got a lot to play for too. Uh, and we got to get hot at the right time. And, and we got a great opportunity, a last dress rehearsal before we have that bye week and grind and then get into the East final. What do you want to see from your, like the offense on Saturday? I think the biggest thing is just uh, score points and when we're in the red zone, touchdowns, not field goals. Uh, the second thing is uh, we are like 50% on second and one to three, and, and that number should be a lot higher. Uh, if you look around the league, I think the average is somewhere around 60 to 70%, and we are at 50%. The way you stay on the field, like I said, is, is second and medium, second and short, because second and long is so hard to convert. So for us personally, offensively, we got to be better in, that, in those situations. And one to three, we have to take that mentality that nobody's going to stop us. We're going to stay on the field, give our defense a rest. Uh, and and then hopefully finish the drive with seven points and not three. We got a great field goal kicker, and we know that we have a good spot to kick field goals in all spots once we pass the 50 yard line. But if you want to win games in the playoffs, you got to score touchdowns and not field goals. Who do you got in the World Series? <laughs> <laughs> That's a tough one because you know I'm an Angels fan, but I got to go West Coast as much as it hurts me to say. <laughs> I'm going with the Dodgers for the West Coast, but that one hurts. Premièrement, quand on regarde vers l'arrière, vers le camp d'entraînement, quand on s'est parlé à Saint-Jérôme, T'attendais-tu de jouer autant que ça en bout de ligne? 
Euh, non, vraiment pas. C'est sûr que la, la blessure là, en début de saison de Tyrell m'a aidé vraiment à voir du, ter du terrain rapidement. Euh, mais je pense que là, vraiment, j'ai progressé tout au long de la saison. Fait que je suis content. Quelle, quelle partie de ton jeu, justement, te rend le plus fier? Justement, je pense que je suis capable de m'impliquer dans le pass rush puis vraiment impacter le quarterback. Fait que ça, c'est vraiment de quoi que je, je suis très fier. Là. Vous avez un peu de recul sur ce qui s'est passé à Vancouver il y a quelques jours. À ton avis, qu'est-ce qui s'est moins bien passé? Euh, mais non, mais c'est sûr que, tu sais, comme Cody disait, tu sais, c'est une longue saison, 18 games. Euh, puis, euh, tu sais, c'est sûr qu'on va, qu va, va avoir des hauts puis des bas. Euh, puis, tu sais, là, on a vraiment eu un bas. C'était un long voyage. On a eu, joué lundi. Mais tout ça, c'est vraiment des excuses. Je pense qu'on est la meilleure équipe. Puis, il faut vraiment continuer à, à progresser. Puis, euh, on prend à regarder vers l'avant. C'est bizarre, le match que vous jouez. Je, moi, je me rappelle pas d'une fois où les deux équipes qui ont un bail s'affrontent lors du dernier match de la saison. Généralement, tu finis contre une équipe de ta section. Qu'est-ce que vous voulez montrer à, à Winnipeg en fin de semaine? Ils n'ont pas un bail. Hein? c'est sûr que Winnipeg... Euh, euh, non, c'est ça. Winnipeg euh, ont beaucoup là, euh, sur la ligne en venant ici à Montréal. Euh, puis on veut montrer vraiment qu'on on, on veut envoyer un message avant les playoffs qu'on est une équipe très physique, puis on va compter, nos, euh, peu importe la situation. Là. Eux, ils risquent d'arriver avec leur leur équipe complète, justement, pour s'assurer de, oui. de, de concrétiser le, la fameuse semaine de bail. Est-ce que ça va être équipe A contre équipe A moins? Non, je pense pas. Je pense que Coach Moss veut qu'on se présente toute la gang puis vraiment qu'on qu qu finisse bien la saison ici à Montréal. C'était quoi, selon toi, la, la, plus, la, 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 la plus grande adaptation pour toi de passer du rang universitaire au rang professionnel? Je pense vraiment que c'est la grosseur du terrain. Là, vraiment... Euh... Encore cette, cette semaine, je me disais qu à quel point vraiment le, le terrain est grand. Puis, euh, tu sais, les, les drops en tant que de secondaire, c'est vraiment plus loin qu'aux États-Unis. Euh, mais c'est de quoi que je m'améliore de semaine en semaine. Là. Le coach nous parlait justement de ta capacité d'adaptation. C'est quelque chose que tu avais même dans les rangs universitaires? Ça, c'est une qualité que tu as toujours eue? Oui, je pense que n'importe qui qui joue professionnel au football a une grande capacité d'adaptation parce que tu es mis sous pression dans beaucoup de positions. Euh, durant le temps d'une saison, même universitaire, là, aux États-Unis, il y a beaucoup de pression. Tu dois être capable de t'adapter. Congratulations, sir. Thank you, man. Appreciate that. Appreciate you. Did you have a better season than last year, personally, individually? Um, honestly, uh, that's a hard question, man. I'm the type of guy that once I put something into a game, I go on to the next game. So sometimes, the later in the season we get, I start to forget what I did in the beginning. I mean, I definitely feel I got approved more uh, mentally, uh, you know. Um, I, I, I left off where I started last year. You know, I came back out here just trusting the process and um, just being more of a vet in this defense, I'm starting to understand it more. So it's making it a lot easier and it's slowing the uh, game down for me. I was talking about you during a practice last week. I was looking at your legs. So how come that guy is not bigger than that and he is able to tackle as he does? What's the secret to be a good tackler at your size? I mean, the cliche answer is technique for sure. You need your technique. But uh, one thing I say is heart, man. You can't teach heart. It's just a will to do it. I mean, you just go out there and you say you're going to do it, you do it. So that's what I try to go out there doing. I mean, like you said, a lot of guys look at me like I'm small, so I take a little pride with that, you know, and I know what they're thinking, so I go out there to try to prove them wrong. As a team, as a group, what do you want to show, what do you want to prove Saturday? As a team, um, I just want to prove that we're the best team. I just want to prove that we're the most physical team, we're the most disciplined team. Get back to where we started in the beginning of the season because uh, we started all hot, we came to a little uh, slow streak, but we know what we got in this locker room. We just got to come out and just be ourselves. Uh, Jeff Contar, who has been named the Rookie of the Year for the, the team you've been able to play with and alongside him all season, how did you see him progress from day one to today? Man, he, he came a long way, man. Um, just from day one, we, we got close. Um, me and him clicked from day one. You know, in our linebacker room, we had this motto, uh, linebackers lead. And to see him get a award today alongside of myself, it just meant, some, it meant a lot to me, to be honest. I mean, you know, I took that personal because, like I said, I'm alongside him more than I am with any of my other teammates. Usually the uh, MOP or MVP, I always forget all this league calls that, that, that <laughs> this award, but uh, um, it goes to an offensive player. How, what does it say about the kind of season you got that a defensive player is the, uh, def is the most valuable player for this team? I mean, it says a lot. I mean, like you said, I mean, I, I did my research. I heard uh, there wasn't a, only but one defensive player that ever did it. I mean, but me, I try not to get too deep into these things because I just told my teammates just today, uh, this reward don't mean nothing if we don't win this championship. So I've never been a guy that was all about myself. I mean, we all know that you, you can't execute a play in the game without just a team. So uh, I definitely got to give my credit out to them guys. Uh, of course, it feels good to get these accomplishments and for people to uh, give you credit for the work you put in. But uh, 
I like to focus on the team thing and, and, and the biggest thing ahead of us, which is this championship. All right. That, there's, there's, I have one more, sorry. There's, you know, some guys, when they hit free agency, they go to a situation and it impacts their career negatively. Some guys stay the same, mm -hmm. some guys take off. With hindsight, you look back, the decision to come to Montreal, it seems like that was just like it helped catapult you to another level. That decision, sorry, that decision to come here, looking back on it, how impactful was it on your career? It was very impactful, man. It felt like my life then changed like over a short period of time. I mean, before that, you know, my, my football journey was very rocky. I didn't know it was on the other side, but uh, just growing up, I always was taught to take that leap. And, and, you know, when I first took that leap, I was a little nervous, man. And ever since I got here, man, it's been nothing but love and nothing but uh, everything I ever wanted out of a football journey. And, uh, and I appreciate everything they give me here. And maybe last one, how would you explain what happened last week and how do you do to come back stronger this week? I mean, we don't like to make too much excuses. I mean, it was a short week. We had a far travel, um, you know, but simply we just wasn't ourselves. I mean, how we come back, just, you know, come back, rest, get our bodies right, uh, come to the practice field, make the small things big, and um, just like I said, be ourselves. Just do what we know we can do. Thank you, Mr.